Okay, so I've unscrewed the Phillips head screw here, the Phillips head screw here, the Phillips head screws here and here, tri wing screw here, tri wing screw here, tri wing screw here, and this tri wing screw here doesn't seem to want to come out just yet. Here I've taped the volume button. I folded this little piece of tape here down so that I can easily remove the tape later on. And similarly over here. And when you open this, you, you uh, probably want to use something plastic. I usually start here because it's, it's already opened a little bit. And I just run this down and just kind of lightly pry it open. Work your way around here, and once you get to here, okay, it may feel like it's kind of tight, and there I'll explain why that is. Okay, should be able to open this up if you don't have that glue sticking on, and in fact, it turns out that this unit does have glue. My piece of tape seems to be causing some sticky uh, issue, sticking issues. Now, here's that uh, that glue that I was talking about, and you can see here that indentation was actually that indentation was actually this little screw uh, post there. And right as you can see, when you pop this open, and that little that piece of glue basically pulls this piece right back down to the motherboard. See that little this tiny little peg here, that tiny little peg is the power button peg. I've actually had to replace that because I broke this um, without knowing that this glue was here. Okay, um, But yeah, that peg can get broken and there's also one for the, the volume button down here. Let me uh, focus for you. And the reason why it breaks is, again, because when you pry this, this uh, case apart, that glue is going to try to force everything back down, and if that power button happens to pop up, then you know there are pieces of plastic here. This little piece of plastic here doesn't fall into the correct place, and then, of course, it breaks this little thing here. Okay, the other reason why you want this tape here is because it makes it easier to put these uh, the case back on. This these this volume bu um, button thing here, it falls out almost all the time at me. The power button, not so much, but this went all the time. So having that piece of tape there makes it so much easier when you close your case. Okay. Okay, um, this is the slot one. Uh, that's what we're going to need to remove right there. You may or may not have that piece of glue on the left, but basically just unsolder slot one so that we have room for our speakers which are going to go here and where that glue is. Okay, so you're going to have to figure out how to uh, you know, remove the components um, on your own because um, I've already done that with mine and it doesn't really make sense to uh, use mine as an example but um, where I got my information is iFixit so here's their page on the Nintendo DS Lite um, what you want to do is go to their section on the upper LCD screen and uh, just follow the steps. I'm just going to breeze right through it. So this is removing the battery cover, then take out the battery, remove two rubber feet. Once you do that, then you can remove the two Phillips head screw there, the three tri-wing screws here, uh, one tri-wing screw there, and another Phillips head there as well. Um, they've color-coded it for you so that you can uh, make sure that you keep those screws separate. Again, here's some information about prying open the bottom half. And don't forget what I said about the glue. Once you have that, you can remove the two trigger buttons. This is what they look like, so don't lose this peg and don't lose that spring, otherwise you're going to get screwed. Um, you can then remove the um, Wi-Fi wire. Just lift up there. Now what they did is they recommended removing the Wi-Fi motherboard or the daughter board so that you can get access to the microphone cable. It's not necessary to actually remove that, um, but it may make it slightly easier 
to uh, remove this cable here. So anyway, if you do remove the Wi-Fi cable, you're going to have to slide it through underneath the slot one um, unless you've already unsoldered or desoldered the slot one. So here's where they talk. Uh, they show you how to remove the touchscreen cable, and here it is zoomed in. So this there's a, a a little flip button here. There's a you know so you'd have to lift this up, and easiest thing to do is get like a toothpick, and because you know you may or may not have this plastic piece, lift up on here. When you lift up on that, this is what it looks like, and then you can. Uh, pull that up. I actually don't recommend taking that off just yet. What I actually recommend you doing um, is taking these, the screw here, and there's another screw out there first. Um, but again, they they do it in a slightly different order. It, it doesn't make too much of a difference. It's just a matter of preference. The important thing, though, is when you actually undo these two screws and then finally lift up on this motherboard, is that you don't lift up on the motherboard. Push up on the screen. Okay. And the reason why is because this screen is attached to this motherboard through that cable right there, which is pretty flimsy, and then one other LCD connector cable, and that's all. Okay, so if you break that, then you're completely screwed. Um, once you've taken that off, you can then remove the upper screen LCD connector. It's not too hard to do. Um, you can pry this up with your own fingers if you, if you uh, don't have this kind of tool here. Okay. Um, after that's done, so this is the upper half, remove these two screws, that's where the power button stuff is. And then on the opposite side where the cables and the, the Wi-Fi wire as well as the microphone wire are, what you do is you take the LCD cable and you slide it through the slot here, just like they, they uh, show you in this second picture here. And once that's through there, you can then lift the, um, the top half of the, so, sorry, the top layer of the bottom half of the case, okay? And if you do it right, then this cable will just slide through and you can then pull your two wires out. Finally, take out these four covers. They're, um, they're just held on by uh, ad some sort of adhesive. Um, four Phillips head screws will then allow you to take off this top. You don't need to remove these. These can stay on. Um, when you remove the... Uh, to remove the screen, you're going to have to hold on to the two halves of the top layer. And I believe you pull down with your thumb while pressing up with the rest of your fingers. So um, what that does is that creates this little gap here. So imagine pulling your thumb down and pressing up with the other fingers on the back side. Um, just take some plastic tool to pry open the two halves. Here's your screen. Okay. And push up through the other side of the screen. So here's the Wi-Fi board, here are the two speakers, and the microphone is underneath all of that. Once you have that, what we're all we're really after is this cable here. This is the cable that we want. You have two choices. You can leave everything soldered on, and the reason why I don't recommend that is because those beads of solder are extremely huge. There's really no reason to have that much solder on there. Um, and again, we don't have that much clearance room in, in that area where we used to have slot one, so this is up to you. You basically want to just cut right here. Um, on the opposite side of these two he uh, spots here are some solder points. That's where we want to connect our um, resistor. This little, this little dark orange layer here, you can actually just peel off. You don't actually need this. That's part of the... the backlight um, wires but again this is all that we're really after okay so I'll leave the link to this um, in the description and uh, we'll continue from here there's one There's two.
number th three, and I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these solder points too. This it just looks like a big mess here because there's just so much solder. Okay, the speakers are out. Uh, we've got a a short where the speakers are. I'm just going to add a little bit of flux to this to clean up the solder. This is what I use and grab from Radio Shack for about seven bucks. You don't need too much, just a little dab of it from a toothpick. We're really high tech here. So using a 15 watt iron, I'm just gonna take a, a wick, my iron, melt the rosin a little bit, and clean up. You just need about 15 watts of heat. I know that's not really how you measure heat, but this is a 15 watt iron, just in case you don't know what sort of uh, iron you need. Okay, it's mostly cleaned up. Ooh, that's hot. Mostly cleaned up. I suppose I could do slightly better here on this glass. There we are, much, much cleaner. And now I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and cut. Actually what I'll do is I'll get a I'll get a utility knife and cut that. Alright, what I've done here, let's get some sort of focus in there. What I've done here is I've basically um, attached the the cable that I cut off and I soldered a 1K ohm resistor to here. Um, I actually measured the voltage of the screen, and I think the screen was maybe 22k. I didn't write this down, but I think it was 22k ohms. Um, but a 1k ohm will be enough. And the idea is that this is just to uh, kind of mimic the existence of that upper display. So we'll turn it on. And we don't see anything yet because this is usually when the sound goes on and you hear that ding from the uh, upper screen. And then finally you see this and, well, let's see, where's my, um, I don't have a stylus, I just need something plastic. There we go. Type stuff in, confirm, blah, blah, blah. We don't really need to do this because we're going to turn it right off. But this is a good start and the only thing that we need to do is hook up some speakers um, and that's just to get the testing part done because we still have to organize our, our, um, our components here so that they don't just uh, sit all over the place. I'm going to turn this off. The next thing we're going to have to do is to uh, trim this cable and I'll get to that in just a bit. Um, let me also mention a few things about the uh, speaker solder points. If you look very closely at this, you can actually see that there are plus and minus symbols, and that tells you basically where the uh, the red and the black cables are going to go.